Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from, and welcome to uh, another Monday, another Play Weird stream. Uh, I am Ben, and I'll be your host for the next couple of hours, and we are going to be continuing some work on Charles Hoffman, who is both of the Guild and the Arcanists. So, yeah, I think so. As you can see, we've we've um, we've done pretty much the bulk of the work that we're going to be doing. Oh, oh, hey, Doug, thanks for thanks for tuning in. So, as you can see, yeah, we've we've done um, we've done the bulk of the the work on the skin. Um, so anything else that we do is really going to be to to add a little bit of sorry I'm fighting with my windows and stuff here um, it's just going to be to tidy up add a little bit more nuance like I was saying just there before I came on the stream I think that I think his face around the cheekbones maybe do with a little bit more nuance but that's a pretty solid start right there I think we've got and obviously we do have his uh, his backpack with the with the mechanical arms just there so but I've left that separate so that it's easier to work on them here so I think I said last time that the plan was to do his shirt red. So I think we're going to work on his shirt. Got a nice clean palette uh, for you here today. Oh, hello, Scarlet. And hello, Play Weird. Even though I was talking to you two minutes ago. Hello again. So um, I think. I think I'll start with a sort of red brown, some rain oxide. And if you if you've got any questions, um, please do chime in with them. I'm happy to try and answer them if I can. Uh, mainly hobby related. I'm still a bit of a a novice when it comes to uh, Malifaux and weird games. Although you'd be pleased to know, I've been doing my homework, guys. I actually, I, I went and I got some of the, the books and I've been reading some of the short stories. So I'm learning stuff about Malifaux. So it does mean that if you are... Let me show you what I'm doing here. So, oops. So I've got my palette here. If, the, if we want to, f there we go. I've just got some, just dumping a little bit of water on there if I need some more. And then I've got my paint here. So I'm trying to keep that nice and nice and fluid, nice and wet. And obviously, if we keep that paint confined to a smaller surface area, it's not going to cure as quickly. So that is going to stay. Uh, nice and wet for us for quite a while and then we've got this little puddle here that we can if we need to we can add a little bit more in so yeah I have been learning all the stuff about uh, about Malifaux of late uh, been reading up on the game rules I have been well, a little bit. There we go. That's a pretty good consistency there. So we're just gonna put that one there. And obviously now we want to be careful not to get any on the on the skin. So yeah, I've been I've been learning stuff, guys.
Queen. I've not listened to the breach side broadcast, um, but I'm I'm definitely going to do that. And the great thing is that I can just listen to that while I'm painting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because so I I read I've read the 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 timeline of events from the uh, from the core book the core Malifaux book and uh, I went and read uh, well I'm, I'm still in the process of reading the uh, the short stories in the guild book. I, I really love the uh, the Lucius story in particular. That guy's such a creep. A brilliant character. Oh, so it's that it's actually um like narrated and everything, that's cool. It's just like a, a, a reading of a, a short story then I guess. Is that the idea? He's one of the few genuinely good people in Malifaux. You know, I have heard that. And I do I do like a good guy, I have to say. Like in a lot of the other I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush, I don't want to hit any of that skin. A lot of the time, and like the, the you know the when I play a game like a video game where you've got moral choices or anything like that, I, I, I like to go with the the good guy. Just something about someone stand, you know, like a, especially when it, you know, like you've got someone who's trying to do the right thing in the face of overwhelming odds or in the face of great oppression. I find that quite inspiring. So. Hoffman was what the, the guys at Weird sent to me because I'd suggested that it'd be good to do a bit of work on the true metallic metals, but to to try and show the metal alongside like fabric and skin and things like that so it reads better. So um, I was completely open to suggestions on that and it was... Uh, it was Hoffman that they decided to send my way, so I'm actually going to try and uh, build a crew around them, I think, because he seems like a cool guy, and I was actually reading through the, the rules that he and the, the various augmented have, and they seem like a pretty cool uh, crew to run. A lot of uh, potential for synergy, synergetic 
Crew, which I'm a fan of. So if you listen to them in order, you really get a flow for the storyline. But if you want to hear the best story in all of Malifaux, jump to Puzzle Box. I think I will I think I will listen through them to them all. Because I do like a good story. I did go through a phase where I was listening to quite a lot of uh, audiobooks like, like last, last summer I was listening to a lot of them so getting a Getting a little bit more colour in there. And what I'm going to do, because these goggles are going to be brass and leather. get a little brown base coat on that I think so uh, just being careful not to undo yeah audiobooks and podcasts I, I agree I agree Doug Although I do, you know, I do like to listen to music as well, but I think, like, as much as I like bands like Iron Maiden and the like, I, I prefer when I'm painting to listen to, like, classical music or sound, you know, like movie soundtracks, that kind of thing. I know some people like to listen to metal when they're painting but I find it a wee bit distracting Looks like the brown on his chest could be a bit smooth. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a jackknot. Okay. 
So I was thinking potentially of doing the some of the leathers like an olivey suede type colour. But I'm not sure that that'll read very well against the uh, Because there's going to be quite a lot of brass. Hmm. Well, we can have a think about that later. Let's uh, let's focus on the task at hand and get this shirt painted. Might do his, uh, might do his trousers, like denim. That might look cool. And give us a little bit of visual harmony with that blowtorch, potentially. But for now, we're going to. Bit of corn red. I'm just mixing a little bit of the brown in. I'll show you guys just here. So I've mixed a little bit of brown in to get a slightly darker red. I'm just going to do that in over the top. And we're going to leave. Don't want to cover the, the brown entirely, so we're going to leave a little bit of that shown. Like so. Those raised areas. So this is this is gonna allow us to To really build some new ones, some depth onto the shirt. Huh? 
those nice uh, nice thin layers we're using here. Keep the paint manageable. Let's just blend it. Like so. I'm just using little push strokes to gather the pigment where the white's a bit stronger. So it's still still dark, but we're getting there. We're getting there. So if if you've seen the uh, the excellent uh, Charles Hoffman artwork, you'll notice that he actually has a white shirt on. Um, I've changed it up for a couple of reasons. Um, one. I like red, sort of uh, gildy colours as well, felt appropriate, um, but the, the main reason that I decided against uh, white was because I felt that it would be a bit difficult to, to manage without, you know, pulling focus away from his face, which is, that's where I want the focus to be on the, on the model. It's very easy for any white to become the, the focus. So yeah, red shirt is more fun as well. You are correct, sir. All right, so I'm just going to, I'm going to use pure corn red next. So this is this is still quite a, a dark red that we're using as reds go. Oh, we still got I've got probably another 
couple layers to do on here. That's my mess. That name. I've bought you. Any tactfully done play weird? Okay, and doing the same where I want to try and leave a good bit of the previous layers shown through. That's going to help with my blend. No such thing as too subtle when you're blending. Try to use fewer brush strokes again because more brush strokes you use, the more you can end up pushing around paint that's partially cured. And that's when you get a lumpy, uneven look to the model. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm pretty happy with the arms. I don't think I'm going to do too much more to them. It is like I was saying, it's just the face. I'm just looking to see if there's any bits that are maybe a wee bit on the patchy side. There. 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 Before I move up. Again. Happy with that, so do some Antares red with scale seventy five this time. As you can see here, it's quite a big jump, so I'm going to mix them. So it's not quite as stark because we are we are getting 
closer to doing some highlight colors here. It was just a wee bits there we could do with a bit of attention. So, okay. Starting to pop, hopefully looking less flat. I'll we'll maybe do a wee bit of texture on here as well. I'm going to make it look a little bit more worn. It would be good to do some like oil stains and things like that on his shirt. Oops. It's quite bright outside. I need to shut that window. Or shut the curtains rather.
felt like doing a little bit of stipple on there. Because I don't I want I don't want this to be too smooth because then it'll it's not contrasting enough with with the skin. So that's what we'll do. Bit of step one in there. I'm, I'm doing it very, very small because I want it to be subtle. Just want it to look as if it's made from like a sort of old cloth. Having this red shirt also means it's going to tie Hoffman quite nicely to the rest of the the crew because we've got our our robo dogs, the glowy red eyes, and then most of the guild construct have got that glowing red and that you know also reinforces the fact that, that you know charles hoffman himself he is guild very very fine tiny dots and you keep them very close together that's going to keep the texture nice and subtle and you get ba barely any paint at all on my brush here while I'm doing this So, how we how we all feeling about Malifaux Burns then? Imminent expansion to the game. Well, that could spell for the story going forward. Okay, pure antar is red this time.
I'm still putting a bit of a an edge highlight on things, even though we're stuck one. Super excited for the story. There's a lot of new master reveals that have tempted me. Same, same, mate. It's interesting how you know, like a lot of the masters. So, spoilers: a lot of the Malifaux masters are, are bad people. It's interesting that um, a lot of the the masters have. Uh, you know, they've either gone up in the world or they've become a little bit more uh, depraved. And that's quite an interesting uh, concept. We're seeing a bit of uh, character development, really. That's what you can see. Which is nice. I don't think I caught um Capital City Cruise uh review yet. I'll need to catch up with that. I've been trying to check in on them. It's a lot of stuff coming out. It's exciting. Right. Uh, I think we'll do a little bit more of a Highlight on this. Let's pick out the the edges. Uh, 
Hey, Eleanor. Oh, a new Death Marshal. I love the Death Marshals. I'm doing great. Thanks, Eleanor. How are you? Just painting a bit more of the Hoff. Where's my Death Marshal? I'm going to put him up here. Here's my death marshal. I'm aware I've shown him a lot on stream, but I'm really pleased how he looks. So, I'm gonna get a, a bunch of these dudes. So that's exciting. More death marshal stuff. Ah, so cool. Oh yeah, I've got I've got the other one here. He's waiting to be painted up. I've done them separately from his. He he's rocking the same look as me, guys. Look, he's got the long long hair and long beard. So maybe there's a maybe there's an alternate reality where where Ben is not a painter but is actually busy working recruiting for the guild yeah so Doug can uh, Doug can stick a beard on Hoffman and that's we'll get him on the table and I'll just be running round as a, a lowly death marshal recruiter Tired and stiff after my move. Oh, yeah, I forgot you were moving. I hope, I hope, I mean, moving's always tiring. I hope it went as smoothly as those sorts of things can. <laughs> uh, skin on Hoffman. I just do that skin. I just did everything with this. It's the three point oh, so it's not tiny. But it's got it's got a good point on it. Um, I mean, you can you can watch it back and you can see exactly how I do it, but um, yeah, just uh, just blend it, just uh, like I'm doing here. Just use a good bit of water to manage your paints. So a lot of it, you know, like that skin I used Bugman's Glow. Uh, yeah, okay. Um... No, not not a large brush, uh, Doug. That's well, that, that's a three point oh. So, and that's a one. So it's the, this isn't this isn't the smallest brush that I'll use, but it's one that I use for a lot of stuff. I don't know, maybe that gives you a better idea of how it looks. So it's not it's not tiny, but it's not 
huge. Yeah, sorry, three stroke, three o. Not a three, three o. A three would hold. Uh, I mean, like the biggest brush I'll use is a two, generally. That. Yeah, that's my bad. Broken toe brushes are great though if you're ever able to to get some over your neck of the woods. But yeah, so the, so these were the paints that I used for Hoffman. So uh, it was Bugman's Glow Base, and then I uh, worked up to so Golden Skin, White Skin, Pale Skin. And then I went back and did a little bit of shading with Indian shadow. So uh, something that that's good, uh, <laughs> something that I, I think is good practice at the at the risk of sounding a bit like teaching your your granny to suck eggs is rather than using lots and lots of paints. Especially if you want to do blending, is to wait for it. Here's the mysterious wizardy power that you, that you can use for blending. Drum roll. Just use the same paint, different consistencies. So, I'll show you an example here. So I've got. Um, I've got some of the Antares red there, okay. Teaching your granny suck eggs, yeah, yeah. I forget that a lot of the idioms that I'll use are not like standard issue. I've got all my weird Scottishism, so I do apologise. If ever I sound like I'm talking nonsense, do pull me up. Okay, so we've got our Antares red here. We've got a pretty good... I'm going to put a little bit more water in that, yeah. Okay, so so we're looking at using different consistencies in order to build up um, different effects. So what we can do here, and the other thing, the other thing is, uh, I should I should go more into this. I think uh, I think I will. I've got some I've got some bigger projects planned for you guys, so we'll maybe go a bit more in depth to some of this stuff in the future. So we're gonna start off light and then increase the pressure a little bit. It's gonna release a bit more water through the brush. And then what happens is oh, that's terrible. You can hardly see. I'm gonna do that a bit bigger so you guys can see it. I'll do a bigger brush. E right. So start here, increase the pressure, and then that drops off a bit more of the pigment at the end there, yeah. But then what we can do, same paint, is we go back different consistency now that, that is a very crude quick example but that is how using the same paint in different consistencies you can e achieve like two and three stage highlights and that's that's like a building block of doing good blending. If you want to learn to do really good blending, try and reduce the amount of paints that you're using. I can guarantee you, you will start to see a difference. So if you, so like if, if you go from doing eight paints to using like two or three, and you're just mixing them together in different consistencies, 
um, you'll start you'll start to see a big difference. I wish I had more Malifaux models painted for you guys. I could show it on different stuff. I've got models from other companies. I don't want to get in trouble though. But um, if you go on if you go onto my my Instagram, you can see a lot of the the models that I've I've painted and. There's a couple that I've done recently that I did skin for, and I only used those two colors. So, yeah. Just managing your consistencies well, and using less colors. There you go, play weirds on the ball. We we link there. You can have a look there. You can see a lot of the stuff that I've done, and you'll see you'll see what I mean about using using paint in different consistencies and less of those paints. Right, uh, one of my sisters lives in Glasgow, and the other's got a Scottish boy. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you're ever if you're ever over here visiting, you'll need to um, need to pop by and say hi. Get a little uh, play weird paint session on the go. That'll be cool. Okay, I think uh, we're going to going to start pushing the highlights a bit more. I think so. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, uh, Doug. I, I, I do not partake myself. I'm not a drinker, but yeah. Hope you enjoy that. Okay, so we're going to introduce a little bit of fuchsia, which is a red that is basically veering towards pink without being true pink. And it is it's a good way to... Uh, it's a good way of uh, highlighting red, I find, without desaturating it.
And we're starting to get a little bit of highlight in there. It's looking a bit more natural, which is good. That's what we're aiming for. Um, are there any colors that you find you end up using a lot in your different models? Yes, definitely. Um, two of them right here. So I use these a lot um, because honestly, they they're two colors that I think are like some of the most versatile. I think like dryad bark in particular, it's a really neutral brown. So like compared to rhinox hide, rhinox hide's actually like a very very dark red. When you look at it properly, and when especially if it, when you see it, like you can see it's starting to separate a bit there. You see, there's a lot of red pigment in that. Dryad bark's a very neutral brown, so it's one of those colours that, depending on what, on what you use it alongside, it can appear completely different. Sometimes it, it just looks like a muted brown. Sometimes it can look a bit purple. It can look a little bit blue. It, it's that that's just a, a very versatile color there i use that lots and incubi darkness again it not as much as dryad bark but it, it can take on a slightly different appearance depending on what you use it alongside but i also i use it to shade a lot of things particularly metals really good for shading metals. I've, I've actually used it a little bit here. You can see some of it on the, see these submerged gears on the base. And then there's a little bit of it shading the, the brass along the ridges on his back. And I'll, I'll I'll actually use um I use that to build up verdigris. So I'll use that as the base color for my verdigris, and then build other colors on top of it. Um, other colors I use a lot: uh, brown gray. This is a another one. You can use that for so many different things. You can use it as a gray. You can use it as a foundation for stone because then that a mistake a lot of people make when they're painting stone colors is that they'll use um they'll use a bit more of a blue gray which you can do um but to get your stone looking quite natural you do want to get a bit of brown and a bit of green in there as well so that that's a great color for that you can also use it to highlight brown as well if you want to do a more muted brown. Just a great, really versatile colour that. You can also use it to do um leathers. Like a you know, like a really warm desaturated leather. And um well I, sh I think I showed it earlier. This, this is a good Indian shadow. Just using that for shading skin tones. Really, really good. Yeah, there's there's others that I, I use a lot, but um, they're ones that I reach for on a pretty regular basis, for sure. When you're when you're doing stippling like this, you really want to pay close attention to the angle that you're holding your brush at, because if you if you hold it at a, a duff angle, hold it at a bad angle, 
you can end up uh, putting, you end up sort of stamping lines onto the model instead of dots. And it detracts from the effect that you're going for. Oh yes, I would. I would still use Rhinox Hide, but it wouldn't always be um, appropriate to use. Like Rhinox Hide, um, for instance, would look strange on like a lot of the December keyword stuff. If you're wanting that to look quite um, cold. Then you would you would use dryad bark over rhinox hide probably because it's going to assist with that that cold and desaturated effect. So it's I guess it's just realizing because there's there's different applications for both. I actually use uh, rhinox hide a lot as a base coat for um, gold and brass. Depends what you're doing. Okay, and then I'm just going to use some pure fuchsia this time, mixing that up there. A little bit more water, I think. I'm gonna just gently stipple in. Not forgetting to do. Those highlights.
Well, he's looking pretty dapper, I think. His red shirt. A proper guilt official, yep. And then I think I'll do one final highlight on that. And that is going to be a bit of fuchsia mixed with tenere yellow. Okay, can you see that? I'm reflecting quite badly here. So again, if we put white through that instead of yellow, it would just make it pink. So it's still, it does look pink. But it's still, it's still got that, the, the vibrance of... Uh, that fuchsia colour. I'm just using these last highlights to, to really sharpen up the edges on the, on the model. Maybe just put a couple more stipples in here and there, like so.
I think the plan is we're probably going to paint Charles Hoffman himself up to um, more or less a state of completion. So this little bit of the model here, we'll paint all that up and then we'll get to work on the the metal and we do have a, a base ready for him here I think this is his yeah. so we've got a little bit of I was going for a sort of um, Mojave Desert uh, Badlands type environment with these colours a good bit of shadow in there and that's just uh that's just all airbrushing angles for the colors and then build up and kind of sandy look and we've got these gears and cogs submerged evoking the the augmented theme of the of the gang. Just having a wee drink, excuse me. Um, uh, paint straight out a little, so water in. So I've just been doing this on the, the dry palette because it's a bit easier to show you guys, but some of the mixes and blends that I've done here I'd probably generally do on the wet palette. Whether I put paint on a, a wet palette or a dry palette just largely depends on how it behaves. Just kind of tinker with paint a bit, see what works for it. There's, there's some paints I just would absolutely not use on a wet palette. And metallics. Definitely encompassed within that. Trying to catch. I'm going to need to do a bit more work on the collar, I think. But I can do that later on off stream. Don't want to be boring you guys. Watch me doing a load of. Catching up. There's some bits under the arms and such that I've missed. There's a bit where I've, I've actually gone on the skin, but I'll need to tidy up, see that.
and then what you can do after is you can go some very thin down yellow you can just pick out those those high points Much there, I think. That's better. That's better. Okay, and I'll go. I'll have pictures for you guys up on my socials again i think we can move on to something else now you you, you got the gist of the, the shirt there so i haven't done a lot of planning uh for this guy oh cheers doug but I've changed my mind. I don't want to do the blue trousers because there's quite a bit of blue in the metal. So I think we're going to do brown. Yeah, we're going to do brown. Gonna do like a, I think a dark sort of dark khaki color. A bit of brown leather. And then I've got this. This is just like a. A cheap synthetic brush. Get a really nice uh, ergonomic handle on it, though. I kind of wish you got a like a Kalinsky sable brush with these handles. I'm sure you can get them, but like a lot of the brushes that I like, I feel like you can never get a perfect brush. Seems to always just be a little bit like shopping for clothes. It's like you, you don't get a perfect fit. You just get the closest fit you can manage.
I think that looks good. So we've got waistcoat or vest, but we've got these leather straps and the belt still to do. <laughs> Why the fight with his six masters? <laughs> This this guy's currently the the only master that I own, so makes things easy for me. Ten years, wow. Well. So I think that um I'm going to I think we're going to do Rhinox hide on the rest of the leather. So let the straps, goggles. I think I might do his waistcoat whack. But I'm not sure yet. But we'll do we'll do the Rhinox hide. What we'll do is we'll block in. Rest of our colours. I think I might be running out of Rhinox hide. Um, okay, I, th I think I need to take a quick. Uh, two minute break, if that's okay. Uh, play weird. If we can just take a couple minutes, just need to just step away. You just let me know when we're good to go on that. And then I can. Okay. Right. I'm going to.
Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so all the leather straps, rhinox hide. So this is this is really going to help pull focus towards Hoffman. You hear a lot of people in painting talk about uh, contrast in terms of making a, a model look more attractive. But what you will not hear people discuss near often enough is uh, the wrong applications of contrast and i mean that this is not to say like you know like i'm the model police and this is how you should be painting your miniatures it's, i'm i'm not about that at all I, I absolutely think that that people should be free to paint their miniatures however they like however If you really want to uh, have your miniatures grab people's attention, there are certain rules that you at least want to have an awareness of. And so A lot of that comes down to what on the model you want the person viewing it to focus on. Naturally, if it's something that's got a face on it, that's where you want the focus to go. Don't we don't want things distracting us too much from Charles Hoffman himself? Fortunately, we've got an excellent sculpt to work with with um, with Charles because the sculptor's done a lot of the work for us. Because look, the entire model's framing him. You get the arms either side. Pulling focus into him, the arms. It's it really is a great sculpt. Sometimes you can have a little bit more work involved, you know, especially if you've got a lot of other details on a model. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult. You can end up having several elements of the model essentially competing for the the viewer's attention, which we obviously want to avoid. I'm going to do the, the leather. It's going to be sort of reddish 
mahogany coloured leather, I think. Another coat of the, the chocolate brown over the legs. It's a little bit patchy in places. Okay. A bit more water there, I think. Eleanor, you've been, you've been playing like just just Malifaux for ten years. Make sure. Grizzled veteran, I think. Thinking I might do later on some glazes over the red just to try and put a little bit more richness into it. So I don't want to do the, um, I'm not going to do the vest black. What am I going to do? It? I've got this sort of olive brown color called Kobe Brown. I'm going to see how this looks. 
me give it a bit of a shake because I've not used it very much. I will probably shade this down a bit. But I think that reads pretty well against that. I do think we need to punch a bit more colour into that red now, looking at it against the other colours. But I mean, this is this is why it's quite important, you know, when you're painting something to get all your colours in alongside it before you make a drastic decision because your colors can look completely different alongside certain other colors as you can see here the red's starting to look quite washed out against some of those richer brown colors I guess going for sort of buckskin looking vest on them. Oops, off camp. He looks so weird when you look at him like that with his backpack on, doesn't he?
Oops. So I, th I think I'm going to do a little bit of a glaze right now. Show you guys what I mean by doing that. So you can, a lot of, a lot of paints will advertise themselves specifically as being glazes. Um, this one is no longer available, unfortunately. But you can make it yourself, uh, basically using inks. I think it's red ink, yellow ink, and water. That makes that blood letter glaze, which was a really good one. Um, you've got also contrast paints. If you thin these out, you can use these to make you a good glaze. And then the other way you can do it is just using good old paint, good old fashioned paint. So I'm gonna use a little bit of blood red. I'll show you what I mean. So there's quite a bit of medium in that. Shake it a bit more. That looks a bit better. And you just want to mix it so that you've got plenty of water in it. So that's more of, it's more or less the consistency that you'd have a wash. You know, if you had if you use a wash out of the pot. And then all we're gonna do and bear in mind wait so it's like you can see that shiny bit there. Very, very thin. And then what we're gonna do is just apply that all over the red area. We're gonna see how it looks. And we're done. Now, you need to bear in mind that most paints will dry a shade darker than when they go on. So it's not enough I'll just give this a quick jag the hair dryer. So that's, it's not, it's pulled some of our colours together, which is nice, but I feel like it could be a little bit richer. So I'm going to use Antara's Red. You find this is a common problem with red, actually, that it desaturate, desaturates as you, uh, as you highlight. Uh. 
Oh, hey, Theria. <laughs> yeah. So he's, yeah, he's getting kitted out now. So. They see me rolling. We glazing. Turn up the saturation on this red. Pushing that pigment up into those raised areas. So we want to stop it from pulling in the recesses. Thank you very much, Athenia. Yeah, I'm 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 pleased with how he's looking. So he does look a little bit more blue on the stream cam. I think maybe one more will do it. So just a little bit more. Just turn up. Saturation. And it looks as though he's in a good place. What that's done is it's it's actually smoothed out a lot of the color transitions as well. I think we could do a little bit more work on this arm here, but then at the same time, it looks quite natural when we put that on there, that shadow, doesn't it? So do a little bit more of the olive waistcoat. Um, okay, so let's put his backpack on and make a bit of an assessment as to how we're feeling about Hoffman so far. I think he's looking pretty good. So we're getting to the point where we're probably going to be able to start working some of the metal soon. I do want to finish all of this bit before we 
get into the metal properly because it's just one it's going to be easier because it's in in the middle there so it means that we're not having to make a mess make a fuss going back and amending anything we might want to in the figure in the middle there but also the metals will read better I mean you can see already look it's a bit on the backpack where the straps continue up we're going to want them to be leather as well yeah still still a fair bit to do but Hoffman is beginning to emerge from his chrysalis of misery. Excuse me, I hope Doug's still in the chat and heard that. We're going to make chrysalis of misery happen. It's going to become part of the painting nomenclature. Mark my words. Okay, well, I fear that our time together is uh, is pretty much at an end for this session so thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, watching me paint a bit of Hoffman we we do have a I think a stream later on today I'm not sure who's streaming I think it might be Doug sure play weird will correct me but um but yeah tune in for that i will be back on wednesday there you go oh, there you go she's way ahead of me yeah i will stop talking and we'll bring a stream this stream uh, to an end so thanks again guys and i'll see you wednesday Thank you.